The heap, while it's not as famous or as versatile as its cousin, the binary search tree, it is still extremely famous uh, and is well known, particularly for the application we're going to do in this lecture, which is the priority queue. Heaps, by the way, are not at all related to something you might hear sometimes called the heap on your computer. That's something you'll learn in some other course, say 61C at Berkeley, uh, and it is just unfortunate that it happens to share names, but completely unrelated. So unlike other data structures, I'm actually just going to give the structure of this one away instead of having you interactively develop it with me. And I think it's just because I haven't figured out a way to make it interesting. I'm, I'm not sure that it's possible. Instead, I'm going to give away the structure and I'll let you come up with the way to do the operations. Okay. So the idea with a heap uh, is, well, what is it? Okay. We're going to define a binary min heap uh, as a binary tree that is complete and it obeys the min heap property. So what do these two terms mean? Well, the min heap property means that every node is less than or equal to both of its children. That's a simple idea. The other idea is a little more complicated. It's known as completeness. And we'll say that a tree is complete if it's missing items only at the bottom level, if anything is missing at all, and all nodes are as far left as possible. Okay. Now, this isn't exactly a mathematical definition, but what it's trying to do is capture the notion of bushiness. And so I'll give a few examples at the bottom of the page because rather than write out some kind of long symbolic definition of completeness, I think the idea here is very intuitive from examples. So here we have a um, tree that is a binary min heap. It, every node is less than or equal to both of its children, and we're not missing any items at all. It's really bushy. Here's a tree that's great, wonderfully bushy. Nothing's missing. Look, right? There's no gaps. If you were a bird, you could safely land anywhere and feel great. Uh, and every item, we'll note, is less than or equal to both of its children. Here's a tree, which is actually also a binary min heap. Now, it's not as wondrous as this one in terms of its, you know, uh, you might think of this as not quite as bushy, but I mean, you know, if you had to draw a tree that was as bushy as possible, that only had six elements, this is what it would look like. And in that sense, it's complete. Here is a tree which is incomplete. And the reason it's incomplete is there is something missing and it's at the bottom level, which is okay, but not all nodes are as far left as possible. Okay? So this one kind of has like a hole in the middle, uh, whereas this one, it's compact all the way to the bottom, uh, to the left, right? That's probably a little confusing. Anyway, sorry people reading captions instead of listening, but all the uh, nodes are all the way to the left. Okay. Uh, and this last one is, uh, it lacks the min heap property. Uh, here we see that the uh, values that uh, if we look on this branch uh, on the right, we see zero is less than one is less than six, good. But on the left branch, it's zero is less than five is less than four? No, that's false, right? It doesn't work out. Uh, and so this right here, Lacks the min heap property. Okay, <clears throat> now to make sure that all makes sense, I'd like you to think about how many of these trees are min heaps. And I'll give you guys a little bit of chance to think about this, and I'll be waiting here. Okay, uh, so this first one, totally heap, right? It has duplicates, but every item is less than or equal to its child, uh, and it is also complete. This tree is incomplete. Uh, while it's true, it's you know, it has a, if you think of it as a an entity, there's no like holes in the middle or anything. Uh, we notice that there are missing items not just at the bottom level but also the top level. So by missing, I mean that every node should have two children unless it's at the bottom level. Uh, and here we see this one is missing uh, a left child, or sorry, right child. I have to do this thing, by the way, when I'm doing these videos, where I have to keep in mind that your left is my right, but it only applies to real life. This is left, even though it's my right. Uh, but on the screen, uh, this is right and this is left. Anyway, not important. <laughs> so this last one here, this one, uh, this tree here, it lacks the min heap property, uh, the last bad tree. Uh, it lacks the min heap property. And if we look at very carefully, the problem here is that four is less than seven, good. Uh, but seven is not less than or equal to five. Uh, and this tree actually, as it happens on the far right, it is actually a min heap, right? It's uh, complete. The only thing missing is on this bottom level and all the nodes are as far left as they can go. And it is also uh, obeys the min heap property. So why do we care about heaps? What's good about them? Well, heaps lend themselves very naturally to building a priority queue. They're basically invented to do priority queues. Uh, so one question that pops up then is how do we start supporting all the operations? So the first question I hope is fairly easy. 
uh, which is how would you support get smallest? If I gave you an entity like this, right? A tree, possibly unimaginably large with quadrillions of elements, and I told you, where's the smallest thing? How would you return it? Okay, so the answer is, it's always gonna be at the root because this is the item which is smaller than everything in the left and the right subtrees, so the smallest must always be at the top. So now I turn to you. How do we support the other operations? How do we support add? And if you're game for it, remove smallest. So if we look at this heap, which is what I'm gonna be using in my demo, the question is, how would we insert three into this heap right here? And you can think about it however you want, right? You might even, I think this is actually a really interesting exercise and it's worth spending five or 10 minutes actually really thinking about this and seeing if you can come up with the right answer. And there is a right answer. Once you find it, you'll know, uh, and, but I'll spoil it in the next video anyway. Uh, but the runtime, right? If you want to do it correctly, if you want it to be fast, I want it to be logarithmic. So I'll see you in the next video uh, and good luck with that.